The United States Postal Service handles more than 150 billion pieces of mail each year. Millions of them wind up at one of the most recognizable addresses, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. Tony DeCopel is here to show us what happens to all those letters after they arrive at the White House. Tony, good morning. Good morning. The inside story of Washington is always full of intrigue, but for his entire presidency, President Obama has asked his staff to bring him a daily dose of the outside story, the thoughts, the feelings, and the ideas of the rest of America. And they do it by reading something that a lot of people think gets thrown away, letters to the president. You know, I get a lot of letters from constituents. Uh, I get about 40,000 every day, and I, I don't read all 40,000. Somebody does. For the past eight years, one of those somebodies has been Fiona Reeves. I read one a few months ago where it said on the envelope, alert, cutest baby photo ever inside. This is our students' mail area. So As director of presidential yeah, correspondence, she runs the team that looks at every single letter, email, and Facebook message sent to the White House about 10 million a year. All those people who self-identify as little old me, this is sort of their entry point. But in his first week, President Obama asked for something other presidents have not, to read some of the letters every night. The ask was for 10 that were representative, uh, and he was really clear about the point that it shouldn't be 10 fan letters. Reeves herself reads 200 to 400 finalists a day before selecting 10 for the president's nightly briefing book. That's not an easy thing to do when the content of the letters is often searing and personal. Yeah, it can be, um, it can be emotionally draining. People are often reaching out to the president as a last resort. The letters aren't fact-checked. But in this tradition, feelings matter more. It's powerful because of what it conveys about your voice or, you know, what you've been through. We've received letters from veterans who are writing in a writing style that could be sort of stream of consciousness, but that makes it so much more powerful. Over the years, some of the letters have been sweet. She set up a, a vegetable garden and she sent me a picture. Others have been funny. One was, I'm retired, I've got some advice for you. You know, ride your bike a lot, spend time with your wife, draw. And then it said, don't be afraid to day drink. <laughs> and I just thought that was pretty good. But many Something are critical. And sometimes the letters say, you are an idiot and the worst president ever. Do you ever feel like he's had a bad few days, he needs a few uplifting letters? We do often feel like when we're giving him a bunch of letters that have some tough stuff in them, uh, particularly if it's a Friday, we should throw in a 10th letter that we sometimes refer to as a chaser. And uh, now it'll be like a kid letter. A chaser to make the hard stuff go down easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. President Obama not only reads his letters, he often responds. Dear Stefan, thank you so much for your letter. Uh, we're so proud of you, so keep up the great work. Philadelphia native Stefan Johnson is a graduate student in public policy at Oxford University in England. Thank you, President Obama. In high school, he wrote the president a letter thanking him for being an inspiration. The president's reply inspired him even more. Even though uh, the letter was short in a number of uh, words, uh, they probably are the most profound words that have ever been addressed to me before. Reeves says she's seen an uptick in praise for the president. Thank you for standing up for women. As more people write to say goodbye. I will always regard you as my president because you were the president who believed in me. Later today, she will select the final 10 letters President Obama will read in office. What do you hope the president walks away with? I hope that he uh, and the country walk away with all of these people continuing to feel engaged and like their government hears them and like they can help shape their government. I think that's what he leaves in our country. So I hope he walks away feeling pretty good about that. And it's too late to send a letter to President Obama, but the White House will be accepting email throughout the day. And who knows, if you get in uh, early, you might be in the hands of the president this evening. I may have missed this. How many does he respond to? He responds to about half that he gets uh, in, in a given night. So every night he's in the White House, he gets 10 of these, and he writes margin notes for about half, and then Fiona writes them up, and you get a reply. Wow. Is there a number of how many letters he's received? I mean, it's in the tens or hundreds of thousands, probably. It's, it's in the, oh, it's millions over the course of the presidency. Yeah. But the, the way that people approach this president, really interesting, it reminds me, there's an FDR story. Uh, when FDR died, uh, a person fell over in sorrow on the street, and a reporter walked up to them and said, did you know the president? And the person said, no. 
but he knew me. And people yeah, write to President Obama in that way. They feel that he knows their lives. How is it recorded, all these letters? Are they recorded somewhere? In 2010, they started scanning them all. It's going to be part of the, the archive. Fascinating. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you. Great story.